when I'm thinking about a child, whether I'm observing them in the clinic um, and doing an evaluation or if I'm observing them in school, is really to be thinking of why. Why do I think that's happening? Um, I think sometimes a behavioral approach can be, let's get them to stop doing it. I actually think what we need to think is, why are they actually doing it in the first place? Um, and the knowledge that I'm coming in with is that sort of sensory integration approach to think about, I wonder how they're processing sensory information. Um, so if I have a child that maybe this, the school that I'm at says, you know, this child is hitting kids a lot, on the, particularly on the playground, um, I'm going to make sure I get a solid observation and see if I can understand why they're doing that. The main areas I'm looking at when I'm thinking of a child maybe with that challenge is something's, something's causing them to be overwhelmed, right? I'm overwhelmed. That's a typical profile. I'm overwhelmed by something. Uh, often when I come in, I think, I'm wondering if they're overwhelmed by sensory input. Um, if you've heard the term sensory modulation, that sort of, I can take in sensory information that's relevant and filter out the extraneous. Um, you're, pro you're probably doing it right now. So like if your sweater is a little bit itchy or maybe there's a humming sound from a fan or something, your body is automatically saying, not important, don't pay attention to it. I'm thinking about that because a lot of times kids can be, their arousal levels go up when they have a sensory modulation issue. And then you'll see behavioral things that might come after that. Of, I'm overstimulated in that sort of fright flight mode of I might go after other kids, right? So maybe that child has sensitivities to touch and sound. They're doing playground play, which is unstructured. And I'm getting jostled and it's loud and I can't take it, 